My name is Hans. We'll be discussing human consciousness. Wait a second. No, it's not. My name is Richard Davis. We're talking calculus here. Anyway, I don't know what I was thinking. Jeez. Actually, what I was thinking is that section 2.7 is the most important section on this upcoming exam. So I strongly encourage you folks to uh, work hard on section 2.7 especially. Anyway, um, let's look at some examples, some uh, homework type problems here. The first question is, find the slope of the tangent line to f of x equals x squared plus 5 at x equals 2. This problem could have also been worded, find f prime of 2 or find the derivative at 2. Okay. And we have a couple of different ways of computing f prime of 2. Uh, I'm going to use this version right now. Okay, The uh, slope of the tangent line at x equals 2 is the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x minus f of 2 over x minus 2. So to compute this, we um, plug the function in. This becomes f of x, this becomes f of 2, divided by x minus 2. Notice I'm keeping the limit sign on each step so I don't get marked off. Uh, when you plug that in and simplify, the top becomes x squared minus 4, the bottom is x minus 2. You factor. Hmm. This looks familiar. You can cancel the x minus 2's because, remember what we learned? Uh, for limits, you don't care what happens when x equals 2. This is a continuous function. This is a polynomial function, so you could just plug in 2 there. So the derivative of 2 is 4. The slope of the tangent line of 2 is, a, is equal to 4. It's like we have a friend coming over here. That's that's Manny, my cat. He he likes to rub a little bit. He's a pretty good math student. I sometimes I don't I don't think he works quite hard enough. And anyway, Manny, do you mind if we finish this problem, please? Please, Manny. We want Ugh. Manny, please. Can we finish this? Manny, let's come on. Let's finish. Let's, anyway, let's look at another example. Now for this one. You want to find the slope of the tangent line to this function, or you could say the derivative of the function at these points, x equal 2, negative 1, and x equal a. So instead of doing this three times, what I'm going to do is find the derivative at x equal a, and then afterwards, once I find the derivative at a, I could just start, I could plug 2 in for a and negative 1 in for a. Save a lot of time, you see? Anyway, uh, and I'm going to use this version of the derivative also. The der the the um, difference quotient uh, of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. You'll also notice what I'm going to do here, instead of dragging that limit sign around in each step, I'm going to take the difference quotient here and simplify it. Then on the second step I'll take the limit, okay? So when you plug in f of a plus h you get this, f of a you get this. You're going to have to get the common denominator and the numerator, so I'm going to, I'm going to um, uh, the common denominator is you multiply top and bottom by a squared. Here you multiply top and bottom by a plus h squared, so you get this. Now, what happens when you multiply the top out carefully, um, this is a plus h quantity squared. Notice the h on the bottom. When you divide by h, it, you multiply by 1 over h. So on the next step, I'm going to carefully distribute through the negative 5, you get this. And when you cancel the 5a squares, uh, you realize that you can now factor the h out of the top and the bottom. So you get, uh, once you cancel the h, you get this. All right, so, th so then on the second step, now I'm going to compute the derivative. You see? It saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of writing, doesn't it? So now I say the derivative at a equals the limit as h goes to 0 of this expression. And by our limit laws, top limit exists, the bottom limit exists. We can cancel the H, H's because we don't care what happens when H equals 0. Remember all that stuff we learned about limits? Anyway, so the top is getting close to negative 10a, the bottom is getting close to a to the fourth, cancel an a. So this expression gives you the derivative or the slope of the tangent line at any point. So now, if you want to know the derivative of 2, plug in 2 into this formula, you get negative 5 fourths. Derivative of negative 1 is 10. Pretty cool, huh? Anyway, let's look at another example. Here, we are given that the population of a small town is, is, is given by this function here, and where t is the year since 2005. 
So it's helpful to think of 2005 as t equals zero. And so when you want to find the growth rate in 2011, that means you want to find the growth rate at t equals six. Well, the growth rate, the population growth rate, isn't that the derivative? So we want to find p prime of six. That's another way to say it, find p prime of six. I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to first look at the difference quotient. I'm going to find p prime of a, and then we'll plug in six. I like this version of the difference quotient, and you, you, you'll, you, you'll see this um, on the homework a lot, too. Uh, this is p prime, no, I'm sorry, this is p of a plus h, right? This is p of a over h, and then when you simplify, I distribute the minus sign here, and I multiply out the a plus h squared. Now I'm going to distribute the 20 on the top, so you get this. Uh, if this works out right, shouldn't everything cancel that doesn't have an h in it? Five thousands cancel, the twenty a squares cancel, and you can factor an h out of what's left. So we're going to cancel the h again because we don't care what happens when h equals zero. We're taking a limit as h goes to zero, so we get this. This is this is the what does this mean? This is the average growth rate, isn't it, from a to a plus h? And now, if you want to find the instantaneous growth rate, you take the limit as h goes to zero. When you do that. Um, well, this this is a continuous function. So, uh, by the way, 40a, think of that as a constant in this case, because as h goes to zero, this isn't changing. Think of this as a constant. Uh, this term goes to zero. So the answer is the derivative at a, the instantaneous growth rate at a, is 40 times a. What does that mean? That means uh, at any year, the population is growing. At any particular moment, I should say, in time, the instantaneous growth rate is 40 times whatever year it is. So it isn't, isn't it growing faster and faster? Anyway, so if you want to find the growth, uh, the growth rate in 2011, just plug in 6. 40 times 6 is 240 people per year. All right, let's ask another question. When is the population growing at 1,200 people per year? Well, there, they're giving you, it says, when is the population growing? That's the derivative, right? That's the instantaneous growth rate. So they want to know when. They want to know the time. So you're going to set the um, derivative equal to 1200 and solve for a. So you get 40a equals 1200 and so a equals 30. So if you add that on to 2005 you'd say in the year 2035. Okay. Well I'm going to do one more here. Um, this is actually something we've seen before but I thought I'd bring it up again. You, should, uh, you can't always uh, compute the derivative using the definition. There, there are some functions that we don't know how to do it yet. In other words, what I'm getting at is if you were to look at the difference quotient for this function right here, the h's would not cancel. It would be true with sine x as well. We're going to have to, we're going to find different ways to do those later. But on the exam, you should still be able to approximate the derivative uh, at a value at x. Um, and we talked about this before. Uh, what, what you can do is you can enter the function into y1 on your calculator, and then on y2, you can enter the difference quotient like this, um, and you can use the table feature. Table feature to pick pick x values close to one on both sides, and you'll see that that the the slope of the secant line is it looks like it's getting close to one. So we'd say f prime of one looks like it's one. We did this before. I would encourage you to see the video on 2.1. I went through this in in a lot more depth then, so you might make sure you're able to do that, okay? So the last question is, okay, what would be the tangent line? What would be the equation of the tangent line at x equal 1? Now that you've approximated f prime of 1, well, the slope is 1, the point is the point 1, 0, right? When x equals 1, log of 1 is 0, right? So you could use the point-slope formula, and you plug those in, you get y equals x minus 1. Does that make sense? Does that make sense that this might be the derivative of zero at uh, one? Let's see. Log function looks kind of like that, right? Right? And so at one, zero, does it look like that's, that slope could be one? And does it look like this graph, this line here, this tangent line could go through the point one zero? Or zero negative one, I should say, the y-intercept? Yeah, that makes sense. I hope it makes sense on the exam. I, I hope you guys do well. I'm, I'm rooting for you.